Hello, everybody, and welcome to this conversation with EduGirls. You must notice that we have new surroundings. I'm in my new office in Greenville, South Carolina. Dining for Women has moved our offices. Today, I'm delighted to introduce two of the guests that I have in this conversation. First, I have Anand Seth, who is joining us from Bethesda, Maryland. He is the founder of EduGirls. Hello, Anand. Hello. Welcome to this conversation. And as always, I have Amy with me, who is a technical person, who is going to make sure that this recording is recorded properly and then um, delivered to the rest of you on our website. So Anand, I believe you have a PowerPoint presentation that you're going to share with us about the it girls. It would be my pleasure to do that. Okay, go ahead. By, let me say first, uh, hello to everyone. My presentation is about the school in Jaipur, Rajasthan. Jaipur is the capital of Rajasthan, which is a, a princely state, uh, very patriarchal, still in a lot of its cultural and attitudes to girls. And uh, let me tell you where our girls come from. They come from urban slums of Jaipur. Uh, the job market is right next door if the girls had the right skills, but they live in conditions which are quite dismal. Uh, this is uh, what they call home. Uh, the father pulls rickshaws. The mother is out somewhere working as a maid. And there is uh, a girl at home looking after her younger brother. And look, her biggest uh, regret is that when her brother comes home from school, he actually has some real homework because for her in this setting, her homework consists of collecting firewood, collecting water, cooking and cleaning and making, making sure the house runs for the family as a whole. And if you ask one of our girls how she feels about life, she knows that her parents value education. Her mother, says constantly, if I had got an education, I would not be working as a maid. Uh, our girl also knows that she's low on, uh, low priority on the resources of the family. If there's a bit of money to spare, or even if there's a glass of milk to spare, it goes to the brother because the brother goes to school. And for her, she feels that the primary concern of the parents is that she is safe at home and gets married. And of course, uh, poverty forces are all around at work. And she finds herself uh, doing menial jobs and bringing some income to the family instead of going to school. And in her heart, if you ask her, she will tell you all she wants to do is learn, earn, and look after her family. Because she knows that if you get an education, Girls can do anything. They can be doctors, they can be physicians, they can be engineers, poets, what have you. And at the school where she goes, Vimukti School, it enables her, encourages her to dream big. Let me tell you a bit more about the school. The school is in this urban setting, but it has no building of its own. It actually shares the space of a private school. Uh, our school starts at 1.30 in the afternoon. It has the advantage that it leaves the girls sometime in the morning to take care of the responsibilities at home or even work for a few hours outside the home to bring some income. But in order to make sure the girls get a proper education, uh, the school runs for 280 days a year compared to the normal school in Rajasthan for 200 years. All the girls are from families which earn less than $3 a day. In order to prepare these girls for the market, we have gradually shifted to using English as a medium of instruction so that they are fully proficient in English by the time they finish high school. In order to make sure that they stay at school, because dropping out at grade 8 and 10 is the biggest problem in India, uh, we have annual stipends that accumulate in their bank account. And when they finish grade 12, they can cash in on these stipends. And to make sure they're ready for jobs, or we're ready for college if they're academic, academically advanced. They are assured scholarships, both for vocational training and for college scholarships. And the motto of the school is that their job is only done when the girl is actually in a job. 
And what is remarkable about this effort of ours and the effort of Vimukti is that it only costs a dollar a day. Now, this is where the DFW grant comes in. Uh, the jobs of the future, or even jobs at present in the urban market of Jaipur, all require some familiar, familiarity, some knowledge of information technology. And so our girls at the moment have access to computers, uh, but in a lab for three hours a week, which kind of helps them get some familiarity, but it's no substitute for proper information technology development. And so the DFW grant, which we are looking forward to with great excitement, is it will give our senior girls their own personal laptops. It will train the teachers to integrate the laptops and this information technology into their daily lesson plans. And it will allow the girls, because there'll be a lot of software loaded on these laptops, to actually do a lot of self-learning and improve their skills. And in addition to that, we have arrangements with IIT Mumbai, which has a special program to give in actual credentials and certification for some of the girls who go ahead and actually become IT professionals. And we look at the DFW grant as an opportunity to achieve the dreams that our girls have. So here is a rough timeline. Uh, we will be doing implementation planning from October to December, uh, doing the procurement of our hardware and software January to March. Uh, we'll use the first half of next year to train our teachers to do this job. And then the rollout begins in May 2020 when the new school year starts in Jaipur. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Anand. I'm just waiting for you to stop sharing your presentation so that we can have our conversation. There you are. Um, so I just wanted to ask you a few questions about the girls and the families. So um, we know that most families, when they move from the rural areas of the world and they move to urbanization, urbanization is one of the largest uh, processes that is going on in so many different countries is that they come with lots of aspirations, right? So what would a typical family be whose children come to the Vimukti school? So Jaipur has had a huge construction boom like a lot of urban areas. And so rural areas looking for jobs who move in and then they find out that the services are either not there or very expensive. So end up living in these shanty towns that I showed you in my first slide. Uh, but they are aware of the possibilities. Uh, the urban areas have a lot of new jobs being created. And so they want to prepare themselves for tapping into these possibilities. But unfortunately, the parents are typically laborers. They do pull rickshaws or they will do work at the construction sites or be painters and mechanics if they have some skills. And the mothers would either be look, uh, living, looking after the family at home or for their spare time working as maids. So the typical family is making $3 a day. It's barely enough to uh, you know, make two ends meet. Uh, and they often even turn to their kids, uh, who, particularly if the schooling is not cheap or is not good, they turn to their kids to actually uh, bring some supplemental income home. Okay. Now, um, as you and I know, given our family histories from India, that India is one of the countries that has a huge um, use of mobile cell phone technology. So in all probability, these young girls are extremely proficient at cell phones and with some amount of technology. So uh, to the best of your knowledge, this would be an easy transition for them in the schools to be using laptops and software and uh, you expect that scaling up to be pretty easy? Uh, the girls and the school is prepared. Uh, in the last three years, they have introduced what we call smart boards and there are about 20 um, regular computers in the computer room and the girls have three hours a week access to this computer under a supervised system. So it's not totally new but to actually integrate uh, the use of laptops and use of uh, software available from the Khan Academy or from IIT Bombay spoken tutorial into their daily lesson plans will be an intensive training exercise which we will do in the first half of next year. And then I'm quite comfortable that this thing will make a real difference in the lives of our girls. 
Okay, so um, I mean the the choices are endless. The scope is absolutely endless. But what kind of jobs do you think these girls might consider, given their comfort level with the IT sector? Uh, you know, the information technology skills will be integrated with the work. What the work the girls will do otherwise, and most of our girls at the moment have shown interest in jewelry design, uh, design uh, architecture. Uh, um, closed design. So all computer assisted design work is the first area in which these girls will use their technology skills. Of course, when they go into uh, a shopping, they, if they become a salesperson in a, in, a, in a big mall, of course, being familiar with technology will be helpful. But the real creative part will be immediately in computer assisted design, but these girls are very interested in. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you seen any interesting family impacts in terms of these girls being in a, so to speak, tracked into the technology thing? Are you seeing family interest in all of this? Sibling interest, perhaps? You know, uh, we expect when we allow these laptops to go home that the girls will be swarmed over by the whole family because everybody will have a use for it. And we have told ourselves there's no harm in that. As long as the girl, when she goes home, gets two, three hours of use of the laptop for her self-learning, the rest of the family can also get engaged in it. And so that'll be a spin-off benefit uh, that we hope to see. But for most of our girls, uh, taking a laptop home will be a new experience altogether. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, can you give us a little bit more background about the Vimukti School? Because your school is actually using buildings that um, that an existing school already uses. And it's when those children go home that your kids and students come in and your teachers. So there's a double duty of those infrastructure. You know, if you read or look at Vimukti, it looks like any other school, but it's so fundamentally different that I get very excited explaining the eight or 10 ways it is fundamentally different. First thing is it has no campus of its own. It only runs in the afternoons adjust to the needs of the girls because they need their time to do work at home and then get an education. There's no school that runs for 300 days a year. And we run the extra days because to make sure they don't have support at home, they're first time learners at home, and this way they get extra 100 days of schooling and they make up for the short school day that we have otherwise. Uh, we charge nothing, not nothing at all from the girls, everything is free. But the more important thing is to prepare for the market. We have gradually shifted from Hindi medium to English medium instruction. So they are fluent in English when they enter, uh, when they finish high school. The other thing is we integrate science and technology right into job number, in, into their education. And then of course, we insist that they get a short guaranteed scholarship when they finish. If they're academically start, they get a start smart, they get a scholarship to go to college. If they have a pressure from the family to start, bringing some income home, then we have 10 different disciplines in which they can go in for vocational training. We have institutes in Jaipur lined up. They expect our girls to apply for admission to these vocational institutes. And every item of expense for getting this vocational training is a guaranteed scholarship. And this way, what we do is absolutely unique. You go from A to Z, make sure the girl comes in, overcomes all the obstacles, has full confidence in her abilities, knows her rights and responsibilities, and is empowered to be financially independent. Anand, thank you so much for joining us today in this conversation. We wish you the absolute best of luck on this project, and we have high hopes for your girls just like you do. Good luck. I want to thank you and members of Dining for Women to get engaged with us. I hope you will enjoy the experience when we report back on progress later on. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Amy. Uh, I just wanted to address this to our Dining for Women members. Today we are using an absolutely new software to record this conversation. Please bear with us as we figure this out. Uh, but we are extremely excited to be in our new offices and we will talk to you again. Thank you. Bye-bye.